If after a rigid examination it be found an imposition, it should be extensively published to the world as such. The evidences and arguments on which the imposture was detected should be clearly and logically stated, that those who have been unfortunately deceived may perceive the nature of deception and be reclaimed. Amen. And those who continue to publish the delusion may be exposed and silenced. Amen to that. That was a quote from the um, so-called Apostle Orson Pratt, um, Divine Authority of the Book of Mormon, Liverpool, 1851, page 1 and 2. Pages 1 and 2. Convince us of our errors of doctrine, doctrine, if we have any, by reason, by logical arguments, or by the word of God, and we will ever be grateful for the information, and you will ever have the pleasing reflections that you have been instruments in the hands of God of redeeming your fellow beings. Again, that's a quote from the so-called self-acclaimed apostle um, Orson Pratt, the seer, which was a, a publication of the Mormon church. Um, this, uh, I'm reading these quotes as, um, as to accept this invitation to the uh, members of the Mormon church who call themselves the, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Uh, or, um, now, this is a, a, an outreach to those people, um, and I was once a member, so I, I, I do have a care for these people because I, I was also deceived by, by um, this doctrine and this deception. And discovering this um, invitation by a, an apostle from the church I thought I would uh, make a video and accept the challenge to convince us of our errors of doctrine. So if you're a, a Mormon, uh, I'd just invite you to consider this invitation, it, uh, whether it was genuinely sincere from the man's heart, whether this man was deceived and deceiving others, I cannot say. But what I can say by the word of God and by the word of God alone and um, having received the word of God, who is Jesus Christ, um, I have the uh, testimony of him and his word, and I will show you by scripture from the King James Bible, which is a, which is the Bible that uh, the church uses in its authority, and claiming that the Book of Mormon is is perfect, and the the book, the it's quite open how the Mormon Church uh, values and holds up the Word of God, the King James Bible, the the authorized version of the Scriptures, um, the preservation of the Scriptures, and they say uh, um, that it wasn't trans it wasn't translated correctly. Well, I, I'd like to show. You them wrong on all counts by the word of God um, that the word of God is preserved and uh, that by the scripture I will if you take up this invitation to convince you of your deception and of your error but not to take my word but to, to, to take the word of God because if you can't trust God who can you trust because you certainly cannot trust men um, that's one of the um, the lessons of a, of a Christian, you, can, you can't put your trust in the flesh, you have to trust, to, to be saved, you have to put your soul trust in God, and God has provided a way that we may be saved, and that was through the advent of his son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for all sin, and the whole world is in unbelief, unbelief is sin, so the whole world needs to be born again and the only way to be born again by the Spirit of God, by the Word of God is to believe in Jesus Christ who is sent 
to solely trust in him alone and to receive him and then you've received the word and then the word then like the apostle paul he received the testimony of the word he was an apostle and there was only the need for the apostles of christ's time and once they gave up their lives and, and followed the saviour and, and shed their blood as a testimony the apostles were um, redundant in a sense that they became part of the testimony of the rock the foundation of the establishment of the word of god of the church and Paul had that authority because he received the word. So we have an, a faithful account. And the um, apostles today are redundant. And um, I, I, I'm going to just show you some scriptures and invite you to examine the scriptures for yourself and to trust in God. Do not trust me. Uh, there's a scripture that says, um, come let us reason together say if the lord um so i invite you to reason the scriptures to study the scriptures to examine them and not to trust what you believe but just to trust god and to show you by his word by his his love by his grace by his mercy by his son that you have been deceived and then that this invitation is for not only the prophet but all the apostles and every member of that church and to invite you to examine by the word of God by the light that we've been given and to examine the um, logically and by lawful evidence that uh, the Mormon church is false and it teaches a false works gospel and it's it will, it will condemn the soul who holds to it is denying the Lord Jesus Christ because they, they're following another Christ and another gospel and they're spreading that and sharing that and if they hold to that they're holding to unbelief and they're in sin and they will perish in their sins forever so this is a an exhortation a warning Jesus Jesus taught us to love thy neighbor as thyself and part of that is warning the world that they're under condemnation of a just holy God and that that, that God has laid his life down for all mankind and that is a most precious holy gift and because the world has rejected that, it's all under the condemnation and wrath of God. But because of his mercy and his probation, the world has time to repent. Repent just simply means to have a change of mind, to have an about turn and to look to the only remedy provided, which is the word of God, which is the Lord. He's the same today as he was yesterday as he will be forever he's eternal he's completed his finished work on the cross it was a free gift for all mankind to receive you don't have to earn it it's a free gift because we are saved by grace and i will share share all the scriptures on on in the editing i'll put ad additional scriptures up on the screen to just to back up what i am sharing my testimony of the word of god exposing that which is not the word of god um so i'm gonna just invite uh, this is funnily enough i was examining in i have another king i, I kept my um mormon uh, mormon uh, king james bible and I, i've brought other versions since and funnily enough it hasn't got what I wanted to show and I'm just going to show it this is my um, old King James Mormon Latter-day Saint Bible and um, this is the book of Malachi there you are Malachi f chapter 4 and uh, the very last this is in the Mormon church the end of the prophets there we go so the prophets have ended there's no need for a prophet today because, I'll read you the scripture, um, there we go, Hebrews, uh, this is uh, 
to the Hebrews chapter 1 this is uh, again my uh, Mormon King James Bible uh, God who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets have capital H have that's uh, you know that's done have he has in these last days spoken unto us by his son Jesus Christ whom he have appointed heir of all things by whom also he made the worlds who be in the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sins sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high there we go so Christ has fulfilled the Old Testament because he is the embodiment of the New Testament the new cover covenant he was the Lamb of God the Passover offering the high priest he offered himself for the Father's glory and for this to save all mankind by himself alone and he completed that on the cross so the end we don't need the prophet because we have the son we receive the son that's who the prophets were pro prophesying of to come was the, the messiah the lord uh, the word of god before abraham was i am jesus is god he was sent from the father and he came in the fullness of the Godhead bodily. He gave his life up that all that would receive him and believe would be saved. That is simply the gospel. And so there's no need for a prophet today. Um, I'm going to read from First Timothy. And it again shows... That, that we don't need prophets, that nobody needs a prophet. Um, the prophets are finished. And again, the word of God clearly states we only need the Lord Jesus to be saved. And even Jesus taught that himself. Um, 1 Timothy 2. Right, let's go. Here we are, First Timothy, let's go for 4 and 5, right, um, right, who will have all men to be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth? For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be tested in due time. So there again, we, we only need the Lord Jesus Christ. There's only one advocate. We don't need to go through a system. We don't need to go through a prophet. We don't need apostles. All we need to do is receive the one sent to receive the living uh, mana sent from heaven and to receive eternal life, to be born again, to be baptised into the fellowship of the, with the saints in Jesus Christ, in the Father, in heavenly places. This is the invitation, this was the warning of the Lord to re believe and receive and escape the eternal consequences of unbelief because mankind was fallen from God. We are from below and Jesus was from above. He was the only one begotten from heaven. We were created. We were known of in heaven, but we didn't exist until we were, we were um, conceived and, um, and given birth to. That was, our, that was the beginning of our lives. We didn't... There was no pre-existence and the, I'm not going to go into that but you can examine the scriptures for yourselves just to trust in the Lord and that's how I was delivered from the de de deception. If you're a believing Mormon you're having doubts and you're it's not fulfilling your uh, needs, your spiritual needs or, or your what what you really need 
and what you really need is the Lord Jesus Christ that's all you need and his love and mercy is outstretched for all men on a daily basis on a daily basis but the time will come when that that grace will no longer be available that mercy will be overtaken by the wrath of God the, the, the coming judgment upon the whole world and if you die in your sin in your unbelief hold into a full system and you haven't been born again you haven't been saved you haven't received eternal life you haven't entered into the door into the celestial kingdom as you would call it and you don't need to trust in a, a works treadmill to earn your salvation because that discredits God there's no part you have no part in your salvation that only God could save man, a sinful corrupted nature of mankind only a holy God could redeem that which was unholy so to say that you can play any part have any part in washing your sins is complete delusion and it's a wicked lie and if you follow that lie you'll just be unfulfilled and you'll be serving a merchandising system which is deceiving souls leading them down to hell and keeping them from the mercy and love of the Lord Jesus Christ he is jealous he is jealous for every single man woman and child to receive him he's not jealous in a sense he he, he measures people he has no respect of persons he died to save all regardless and he's outstretched his mercy is jealous to be received he died it's he alone who died to save that which was lost it's he alone who suffers the eternal loss of those who he knows will reject him i exhort you if you're listening to this and you're a mormon do not reject the word the truth and the way and the light that is on offer for you and all people there's no there's no uh, ticket style at the door it's a free way it's open to all and you just knock on the door and believe have mercy on me lord i am a sinner and he will answer he is faithful to his word he will um answer the sincere believing prayer any doubt any fear any t double mindedness and he can't answer he needs humility he needs belief and if you believe you will receive and once you've received you will never not be able to believe and trust and hold to that which you have received and that which you've received you'll be be able and equipped to measure all that is in error you may not you may not get it f straight away but you, you you're you're equipped and you're capable of working out any deception any delusion you'll you'll have the gift of the holy spirit now in the mormon church you you you're claimed that the apostles had the only ones with the authority to give permission to give out the holy ghost this is completely undoctrinal you you received the holy spirit through believing in jesus christ alone and i shared the scripture in um first timothy and uh I'm going to put some scriptures out where, um, but I'd like to just invite anybody, if if you claim that w the scriptures I shared aren't translated collect, uh, properly, then well then I'm going to give you another invitation, and that is to invite all your apostles, all your presidents, all your leadership, and all your um, authority, your general authorities, to clearly release a, a publication of all the scriptures in the, uh, the version of the King James Bible that you hold to which are not 
um, interpreted correctly. And I guarantee you will not come up with a unified um, testimony of that which isn't translated correctly because it, it is used, it's a deception to hold up that which is in favour of itself and that which is condemning of itself it will say it's not translated correctly well invite your leadership to show you clearly that which in the scriptures aren't interpreted correctly so you can remove them and then you won't believe them but I'd exhort you not to do that is to trust God alone trust in the Lord Jesus Christ alone the Word of God Trust in his revealed word, and I'll read you um, Psalm 12. His pres preserved word, his living word, and his written word. His, his word is sealed, it's complete, or it was completed on the cross. And the gospel and word was uh, completed by the apostles, and that, that is where we have the sealed canon. It's, it's completed. And, and it's published and it's preserved in, in the King James Bible and in, and it, and in the uh, faithful text that that came from and, and all the other translations that were leading up to the King James Bible to give us this preserved word. And we've got so many corrupt versions today that it's confusing. Well, what is the word of God and what isn't the word of God? And you've got the same problem. But the word of God has been preserved and anyone sincere who receives the word is able, don't, they don't need anyone else to tell them what is the word of God because they trust in God and his word and they're able to discern and, and study out that which is his word and that which is not. Um, the word, uh, this is Psalm 12, I'm going to read Psalm 12, uh, chapter, uh, verse 6. Uh, the words of the Lord are pure words, a silver tried in the furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord, thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. The wicked walk on every side when the vilest men are exalted. Now we see there, the Lord, like I said earlier, if you cannot trust the almighty, omnipotent, eternal Father and God, and his son the Lord Jesus Christ the creator that all things were through him and by him were created now if you can't trust him you cannot trust anybody you might as well give up uh, the wicked walk on every side when the vilest men are exalted wicked simply means unbelieving when you trust these men you're putting your trust in the flesh you're putting your trust in man mankind and when you do that it causes everyone to follow and that and that causes everyone in is in unbelief and then we're in a dangerous situation where the whole world is in wickedness in unbelief going its own way now this is what the word teaches this is what jesus expressed that he is the only way he is the only light he is the only word and you can trust him and it's in it's throughout the scriptures he, he is faithful and capable of preserving his holy word um, it, again it's in I'll put some other scriptures up so if you, you you put your trust in men you'll be led astray and 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 the scriptures says clearly to put your trust in God and that's my invitation to you and every single person who listens to this video that's not received the Lord Jesus Christ has not received the word and, and believed and so that's my invitation to any Mormon and to whether that's a, a prophet, the apostles, the general authorities any, any leadership, any member all the way down to the, the basement of, of the church and responsibility and I invite you to trust God his word, his revealed word in Jesus Christ, to trust him alone, to trust in the scriptures you hold to in the King James Bible and examine these things, to study the word. And you will see that the, um, the Mormon church is um, 
completely erroneous it's false and, and it's deceiving you and you can be delivered and set free simply by trusting in Jesus Christ and that's my invitation for you to be to believe and to be baptized and set free that you may share that with other people other other people that are lost in the world and other people that are caught to these systems uh, that you have to earn your salvation and uh, um, it, it's you know faith without works is dead well faith without works is dead but what but you got to put put it in the right order you can't work to earn grace you receive grace and grace is born within you and then that produces works so if you haven't received the grace there be no works therefore your faith is dead because we're saved unto good works so once you've received the love of God the love of God will move you in ways that you that you would like to express and one of those um, expressions I'm doing now is to reach out to other people that that have been deceived by this wicked machination these false apostles of light sharing a false Jesus and a false gospel and you can know it and be set free and that's my invitation and I leave there in the name of Jesus Christ Amen